the snow fell gently from the sky, covering our neighborhood in a blanket of white. My friends and I couldn't wait for the first big snowfall of the year. The air was crisp, and I could smell the fresh, clean scent of snow mixed with the faint aroma of pine trees. We gathered at the park, our laughter echoing in the cold air as we started our snowball fight. The snow was perfect for packing, and I formed a solid snowball, feeling the icy chill seep into my gloves. My friend Mike was ducking behind a tree, laughing as he lobbed snowballs in my direction. I took aim, intending to hit him square in the back, but my throw went wide. The snowball sailed past Mike and struck a passing car with a loud thud. The car screeched to a halt and I saw a cracked spider across the windshield where my snowball had hit. Panic surged through me and I turned to my friends. Run, I yelled, my voice trembling with fear. We scattered, our feet slipping on the icy ground as we sprinted away. My heart pounded in my chest and I could feel the cold air burning in my lungs. I didn't dare look back but I could hear the car door slam and the crunch of boots on snow as the driver gave chase. We managed to lose him in the maze of backyards and alleys, finally collapsing on the ground behind Mike's garage. Our breaths were ragged and our faces were flushed with cold and adrenaline. We laughed nervously, trying to shake off the fear. That night, we got online to play video games, hoping to distract ourselves from what happened earlier that day. Suddenly, Mike went silent. One moment he was laughing, the next, nothing. Mike, you there? I asked. There was no response. The game showed he was still online, but he wasn't moving or talking. My heart skipped a beat, and I felt a cold knot form in my stomach. Mike, come on, this isn't funny, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Still nothing. I glanced at the chat window, seeing our other friends typing similar messages. The minutes ticked by, each one stretching longer than the last. The uneasy feeling grew stronger, and I could feel my palms growing sweaty despite the cold. Suddenly Mike's screen went dark, and his avatar disappeared from the game. The chat window filled with concerned messages, but there was no response from Mike. I tried calling him, but it went straight to voicemail. I could feel my pulse quicken, and a cold sweat broke out on my forehead. Something was wrong, very wrong. The next morning, I learned that Mike was missing. His parents had come home to find the back door wide open, snow tracked through the house. The police were called, but there was no sign of him. My friends and I were questioned, but we had no answers to give. Days turned into weeks, and there was still no sign of Mike. The neighborhood was gripped by fear, and I could see the worry in everyone's eyes. The smell of snow and pine, once comforting, now felt oppressive, a constant reminder of that fateful day. One night, unable to sleep, I sat by my window, staring out at the snow-covered street. The world was silent, the only sound, the faint rustle of branches in the wind. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched that the man from the car was still out there, waiting. Suddenly, my phone rang. I jumped, the sound slicing through the tense silence. I glanced at the screen and saw Mike's name. Relief flooded through me as I answered. Mike, what happened? You scared us, I said, my voice shaking with a mixture of anger and relief. But the voice on the other end wasn't Mike's. It was deeper, rougher, filled with a chilling calmness. You should have apologized, the voice said. The blood drained from my face and my heart pounded in my chest. It was the man from the car. My hand trembled as I gripped the phone, my mind racing. I hung up, my heart racing. I knew then that I was next. The next day, I vanished, leaving behind only the memory of a snowball fight that had gone horribly wrong. The man from the car had gotten his revenge and I was never seen or heard from again until now.